But today we have a kitchen remodel that I am very excited about. Um, this is one where the whole kitchen gets reconfigured. So this space becomes the new kitchen space. All this area right here is going to get eliminated and we are making a new bathroom off the back end of the house. So when this is done, it's going to have an island that stretches all the way to about here um, in this space. This whole beam system here gets eliminated and rebuilt. Uh, the whole ceiling gets rebuilt. So let me take you around and show you. The kitchen now will be extending all the way to this wall and um, part of this fireplace gets rebuilt to make another pass through here that goes from the new kitchen in space to the existing uh, family room space. All this ceiling treatment, the, the beams, um, the faux beams that run across, that's all going to get eliminated. We're just going to this drywall. So in addition to the fireplace getting totally rebuilt and this wall getting totally rebuilt, we're also rebuilding this exterior wall here. Uh, this has a window, uh, as you can see, <laughs> and we're putting in uh, a giant slider. So I believe it's like a 12 or a 14 foot slider. It's going to go from one end, almost in this kitchen area here, all the way to this area over here. So it's going to be a really big slider, four panel slider for the two um, center sections slide open. So this all needs to get rebuilt. So it'd be really cool. This bathroom gets uh, partially rebuilt. This shower and um, there's a toilet behind me there and some cabinetry that all stays. going to get stained and match the new cabinet. But this whole wall gets rebuilt. So we have a pop out here that gets eliminated and all these cabinets come out. And actually there's going to be a new doorway right here that leads into a uh, guest bedroom. So all that's going to get rebuilt. And finally this hallway gets rebuilt. This uh, doorway gets closed off. This uh, closet gets eliminated and a new doorway gets installed. This is be the new access point to this bedroom uh, from uh, the uh, dining room. So now let me show you progress. All right, here we are with the demolition completed. We have our new lid uh, framed in. This is where the drywall is going to go. We have our door framed in. We have our new beam here. Uh, open the slider door. This will the weight of the ceiling uh, and the edge of the roof here, so we can put in this bigger uh, slider door. See, we're working on the electrical right now and rebuilding the fireplace. So we got a lot going on. So to create this pass through, this was all a wall before. We wanted to create a pass through. There's an opening on the other side, and we wanted to create an opening on this side and have the fireplace, you know, in the middle of the space. Once we started demoing this this brick here, it's starting just to fall apart. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take off a lot of this loose brick um, and put in some concrete blocks, some cinder blocks, some rebar, uh, drill it into the parts of the fireplace that are still solid, and then that way we can flat the whole thing with tile and uh, we'll follow. This is one of the great parts about a uh, four panel slider. It really brings in the view. You know, now a lot of folks go with those collapsing doors, you know, where you have four panels, they all collapse to one side, and the, you have that whole, you know, we have three panel basically opening, free and clear. What I like about this version over that type of style of door, um, number one, the cost is, is a lot more than this type of door, but also, you know, when you have these double French doors, um, you still have a really wide opening, you know, for entertaining. I mean, I'm six feet, so it's a little, almost six feet wide opening, but um, you still get some screen doors. You put the screen doors on and now you have, you know, bug proof um, open. Um, where when you have those collapsing panels, you don't have that option. You have to do another separate screen door uh, over that. So it's nice if you want the breeze, you can still have it open, but have the, uh, have the screens there to protect you from bugs. This is another interesting addition. Uh, so when we tore out the drywall we found um, uh, stucco underneath it. So this used to be the exterior of the house at some point. Um, and someone built a kind of a sunroom, kind of a dining room nook type area here. Uh, so we are going to be taking off some of those last components of the exterior, putting drywall on there, and then you know, kind of as an, an homage to the old uh, style of construction, we are going to keep this uh, beadboard and uh, extend it uh, to this opening here. When you see the plan, you can see that we reconfigured the, uh, the small entire space. So. This project originally was supposed to have a sub panel that stayed in the original location, 
we ended up moving it out and upgrading it to a 100 amp sub panel. Um, but that means that we need to run new cable. It's called a home run, meaning from this box all the way to the original panel. It happens to be 240 feet away. So not an easy task, but as you can see, we've got it in and um, ready to put up the drywall. This is actually going to be the kitchen. The cabinets are going to go right up along this wall. Behind this wall is the uh, you know, stuff. Uh, is the bat is a bathroom, and um, so we'll have a vanity right here, and then we made the entrance to the door right here. This actually used to be the hallway uh, where I'm standing right here. This used to be the hallway. The kitchen was uh, closer to you, and this was the hallway that led into this bathroom space and the entrance into the bedroom there. But now we've changed the you know, the bedroom to that other side. So it's pretty cool. It's a whole new configuration of this uh, of this floor of the house. This west side uh, wing of the house. If I would from the quest. I don't know what direction I am actually. South. Okay. Pretty sure. It's my quest. You know what? I don't know what direction I'm facing, but uh, this part of the house is, is getting new. It's getting a new floor plan. So that's good. Hi, I'm Jay with Classic Kitchens. Now welcome to our latest remodel. Let me show you around. Let's start with the redesign of the space. Originally this, well I'm still standing in the kitchen, and this was the kitchen originally, but where you're standing right now, or where your view is right now, that's where the kitchen sink actually used to be. And there was a hallway here that went to the guest bedroom and bathroom. So we rebuilt that, this whole corner of the house. Um, also we had this brick fireplace, or now, it used to be a brick fire fireplace, went all the way across to the end of this wall. So that got blown out too. So we redesigned the whole kitchen floor plan uh, along with two other spaces in the house, the bedroom, the hallway, uh, and bathroom all had to get redesigned to, uh, to create this new kitchen space. So uh, we're really happy with the way that it all turned out. We have a uh, chrome faucet from Delta. We paired that with a cross uh, sink. This is stainless steel sink. This was all provided by the clients. Another thing I really like, you know, I like is the push button disposal, so those make it easy, especially on an island because normally you have the, the switch underneath the sink, so then you gotta take your wet hands underneath the sink. That stuff will, will, you know, mess up your cabinets over time, so this way it keeps the water on top of the countertop where it belongs and in the sink, near the sink. We have a quartz countertop on the island and on the perimeter countertops. This one is called Hannah Sky by Arizona Tile. And uh, it's a really beautiful stone looking quartz. You know, quartz is a man made product. It um, is crushed up quartz, which is basically, you know, a component of granite, one of the minerals of granite, the clear component. And then they mix it with colors and they make all these beautiful new shapes and sizes. Not shapes and sizes. It's the same shape and size, all right? It's all square, re big rectangles. The shapes inside the stone itself. So they put lines in it, they put you know veins in it, make it look like natural stone. That's what everybody wants. Back in the day, we used to have to do real natural stone, especially if somebody wanted an accent like a white marble on an island. It would look fantastic for a year, maybe two years, and then it would look like crap after that. Um, and we'd have to come back and tear it out, no more. The stuff you can cut on, although it will dull your knife, so I wouldn't cut on it. You get cutting board, wood cutting board, which you see they have right there. They're pre prepped and ready to go. But this will um, will not scratch, you know, or it's harder to scratch. Uh, really hard to stain, it's non-porous. It's not a food source or uh, mold can't grow in it because it's non-porous. You never have to seal it. So it has a lot of advantages. The one disadvantage is that you cannot take hot stuff right off the stove or right out of the oven and put it directly on the countertop. That will make a, what's called clouding on it, which is you know scarring the surface basically. So we wanna not do that. Back to the design. We have uh, a white cabinet surround for the hood. This has a, uh, an insert on the bottom of it. This is on top of a Wolf 30 inch range. Now ranges have the burners on top and the, and the oven underneath where you know, a cooktop or a pro range might just have, a pro range would just have this front part, it would, would have the oven elsewhere. Um, but this is a range, so it's got the oven built into the cooktop. These are the most economical versions of a stove. Uh, unless you need a double oven, then you know, you're in a different situation if you're doing that much cooking. We have an insert under here, which is a Venta hood, um, and it has three speeds. Let's see if you can hear this. 
that's speed one. Pretty quiet. Now this is gonna uh, duck out to a seven inch duck because uh, it's your normal uh, either 350, 450. You can go all the way up to about 700, I think, with a normal six inch duck. And then you gotta go up to a bigger duct if you are going in the thousand you know, CFM range. So we had to make a little secret door here to uh, access it just in case you need to work on it. So you can pull this panel off and, uh, and access it just in case uh, something goes wrong. So you, know, you don't wanna try to bury stuff in a, in a custom hood that can't be accessed. You know? Or if you can't access it from the front, maybe you can access it from the outside. You always wanna make sure you have access. Even though it's gonna be brand new, you never know, something might go out within the first year or two, now you have to deal with it. You know? So you always wanna have access. So we have uh, some white accented cabinets and then a natural finish cabinet as well. This is a very modern design kitchen. We went with all flat doors and drawer fronts. So that gives it that real chic, modern, crisp lines, and also very classic styling too, right? So this is something that in 30 years is always gonna look really cool. Flat door fronts, the one with matching door panels on the fridge. So that has a more built-in look. And then the accented wood is an alder with a chicory stain. This is from a manufacturer called Canyon Creek. We were playing around with the colors between uh, two different colors and ended up with chicory. There are a few colors that, though in natural wood, that'll look great with, uh, with white. And you can do a lot of different stains and still have, it, have that same look. So we went with a microwave shelf versus just a built-in microwave. This is uh, their existing microwave. We just needed a shelf for it, didn't need a built-in. So we just gave them a shelf, tiled the backsplash, and then they put their microwave on a shelf. The backsplash material is a tile from Drosians. It's an off-white and white. It's got a, a bunch of different colors in it. It looks like a, like clay fire tile, you know, which is a really cool style, especially for a, a kitchen that has a lot of crisp components, a lot of contemporary components. This will give it a little bit of more earthy feel to it. You know, having a tile that is not exactly square. You know, not the real straight square lines. And that runs all the way throughout the backsplash. We did it all the way to the ceiling and then added some client provided lighting fixtures. And these are just to provide extra down light. You know, they, um, they're for, obviously for decoration, mostly. Uh, you, this, uh, the ceiling light is gonna give you all your light. This is just more for decorative light. If you wanna leave it on at night, things like that. Same thing with the under cabinet lights, you know. Under cabinet lights give you great light at night. Uh, when you don't want all that, all this brightness when it's dark outside, you know, you're starting to wind down your day and everything like that, you don't need uh, bright lights hitting you in the face. We put in a new black framed window. Uh, this leads to the front of the house. Uh, the kitchen is on the front of the house and we actually put a matching black framed slider behind you. We wanna bring in the view. They have a great view of some rolling hills behind uh, their home and we wanted to bring that view into the space. So the kitchen has a, has a weird jog. You know, the, the interesting part about doing remodels is that you don't build from scratch. You have an existing floor plan that you have to deal with, right? So we had uh, a floor plan that had a jog in it. You know, it comes to a certain point and then jogs back. So we were trying to figure out, well, what to fill in in this spot. So we jogged the counter back and we ended up doing this extra storage space with the big drawers, right? And then kind of like a beverage center you know, in the end part of the kitchen, which is actually separated by the window. So aesthetically, it has a really cool separation to it. Um, and then in the beverage center, you have, you know, a wine fridge, uh, you have some glasses hanging uh, on the bottom of the cabinets, and then I'm sure more, you know, glasses. There you go, look at that, party time, right? Alcohol. So in remodels, a lot of times necessity is the mother of creation and in that spirit, we had a little spot right here that was excess and we had some room behind it. So we decided to put in a bookshelf in the corner here. So now you have a really cool aesthetic look to it. You can see how it bookends the beverage center really in a really cool, with a really cool aesthetic. And then is also very functional as well. Something other aesthetic that I really like in this, in this uh, kitchen and uh, the clients were 
really working with us on the on the floating shelves is the height of the floating shelves and how they were going to be. We originally had them white, ended up changing them to the chicory stain, like matching the, the base cabinets and the island cabinet. And it looks really cool. I mean, it just adds another little pop, especially with the white tile. The whole thing now just pops really well. There are certain floating shelves that can take a certain amount of weight and some that cannot. So make sure that if you get your floating cabinets um, or your floating shelves, make sure you get brackets that can hold a certain amount of weight depending on what you're trying to do. If you're gonna put dishes like this on the floating shelves, they need to be heavy duty uh, brackets, you know? And especially these are floating, so this, all the brackets are hidden. The mounting hardware is all hidden. It's all built into the shelf, shelving unit itself. Um, versus, you know, having brackets that are exposed on the outside, which can look cool too. Another really cool design feature with this kitchen build is this little hallway right here, which did not exist before. This used to be the fireplace. Well, this still is the fireplace, as you can see, but it used to connect to this wall here. And what we did is knock down part of this fireplace and rebuild the side of the fireplace so that we could open up the space. So now, the fireplace, instead of being a wall that separates the kitchen from the family room, it's now just a little a center piece that that you can walk around both sides. We got to dress up the fireplace as well with a um, kind of a stone and marbly mixed tile uh, that wraps around, and then we did a three-inch hexagon uh, hearth on the floor, and we had that set at the same level as the wood which was a little tricky. We had to set it at the level that we knew the wood would be at once it got installed. But that turned out perfect. Let's talk about the base cabinets and the design that we did um, on the base cabinets. We have a pullout. This is like a um, base pantry pullout. You can use it for spice. You can use it for oils like we have here. Um, it's pretty versatile. It comes with four shelves. They're adjustable soft close, very cool. On this side, I like to match, if I can, the doors. Uh, so we have the same size door on this side. And on this side, we have um, cookie sheets. We call that a cookie sheet cabinet. It has uh, little uprights in it to divide the cookie sheets from everything. And then we have our big base drawers. Uh, those are great, like we have in here, skillets, pans, right? Perfect for pots and pans. Also really good for um, pots in the bottom one good for strainers and Tupperware and, and all that stuff. Um, and then you have a smaller drawer on top that's great for flatware like we have here. You can also have uh, kitchen utensils in there and all that good stuff. I like to design a four bank somewhere. Now in this case, we use it for spices, but uh, you can use it for your tin foil, your saran wrap, your sandwich bags, all that good stuff. Uh, we have a Lazy Susan in the corner. Great to fill in dead space. A lot of kitchens have dead corners. Dead means there's a cabinet here that ends here, and there's a cabinet here that ends here, or sometimes there are blind corners. So meaning that you can open up one door and then you gotta crawl back in there to get your stuff, right? Both of those are terrible designs. We put in a Lazy Susan. This is actually a Super Susan. So Super Susans versus a Lazy Susan. Super Susans have no pole in the center, and these shelves are wood. So the wood shelves have a higher, um, weight rating so you can put heavier things on them like you know bigger pots bigger pans in this case we have a lot of appliances so you know your appliances are big they're bulky and they're heavy so you can fit them on here no problem you can see it spins no problem um, and that way you know the cabinet comes to you everything from the back of the cabinet you can swivel around and get it right at your fingertips Main thing with Lazy Susans and Super Susans are the doors. They're made up of two doors typically, unless you have a, a corner cabinet here, you know, a 45 cabinet. So you just wanna make sure you close one door and then the other door so that you don't clack the cabinets together. That's the main thing. And if you have kids, make sure to teach your kids that or else they're gonna chip the cabinets in the corner. We don't want that. On this side, we have another base drawer. Again, base three bank drawers. Big things, again, in these two drawers. They can typically fit something that's 10 inches tall. So that's pots, pans, Tupperware, all kinds of stuff. Strainers, uh, mixing bowls, that's probably what we got in here. Yeah, we have mixing uh, bowl, we have some more spices in here, and we have mixing bowls on the bottom, perfect. On the island side, we have um, the dishwasher. The dishwasher has to always go next to the sink so you can drain it into the sink. You got uh, the sink cabinets. 
Um, which, you know, you're just gonna have your normal stuff under the sink, you know, your dish soap and all that good stuff, right? Trash and recycle pool next to that. I like to keep trash and recycle centrally located, right? I like it near the sink, so you have, you can go right there. This is actually a great spot because you're right here by the stove too. Wow, this is a good design. <laughs> Uh, so that's really centrally located. Um, perfect for cooking, perfect for doing the dishes. And then we have another three bank drawers here. So this is again, you can use it for bigger things. They got towels in it, but you can use it for, of course, towels, um, but pots and pans, things like that can go. Even though it's a thinner drawer, it can still fit mixing bowls because of the height on the bottom two cabinets. Talking about aesthetics, I really like the design aesthetic of like the wood cabinet with the white marble you look countertop. White cabinets with the white countertops are really popular right now. You know, the wood cabinets, just you can see, look really crisp, really fresh. It grounds the space, makes it feel elegant. Finishing off the island, we have seating on the other side of the island. The client's got these great chairs that almost perfectly match the stain of the cabinets. So we just have some, some block walls. These are called wood walls, you know, the three inch wide. They're meant for the island to have an overhang, you know, so you have a seating for the island. Um, and it gives the island some structure. You can overhang the countertop as well, and you can embed some rebar in the top of the countertop, but this has a totally different look, having the legs uh, kind of closed in like this. And I think a little more elegant look than having it just, you know, stick out over the top of the cabinets. Uh, it gives you these nice end panels on the side as well, um, but it gives you the little more like tucked away seating arrangement. So this is an accent cabinet. Uh, the white on this side and the hood are the accent cabinets of this kitchen. That's typically the reverse uh, of, of, of most designs that I do. Typically the perimeter cabinets are all white and then the island is an accent cabinet. So in this kitchen, we did mostly the stain cabinets, that uh, chicory stain on alder, um, and then just peppered in some white cabinets as the accent. Client provided the fridge for the um, and door panel ready, and then we got some door panels to put on the fridge so they match the cabinetry. And then you have uh, coordinating handles. Now these are refrigerator handles, so you gotta use a little bit different ones than cabinet handles. You know, you can see that they're a lot beefier, but they match the same style. So when you look at it, it just looks like, you know, a bunch of cabinetry. And then this is actually the fridge and the freezer. And then this is pantry with rollouts. Yeah, uh, rollouts are great. Rollouts just mean that the, it has a drawer inside that rolls out. These are adjustable. So if they ever wanted to change the height, they could do that. If they wanted to add more, they could do that. Uh, it's a very versatile uh, pantry. Uh, another cool feature of this uh, kitchen is something that the client provided. He wired in a stereo system. This is the receiver for the stereo system. It has a speaker system that goes throughout the whole house. It has different zones. Uh, you can control the, the sound, you can put music, um, you know, you can actually talk on it if you get a microphone and you can control it from right from your phone. So that's something that he added onto the space and we gave him a little alcove to put the receiver in. And so these speakers you see in the ceiling can be controlled by his phone, which is a really cool feature. Another major part of this remodel was getting the view and the light into the space. So the kitchen was like part of this area and then it had a little window right here and then just a small man door right here. So we blew all that out, put in a giant beam and some posts, which was fun. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and then um, put in this big slider door. So this, this is really cool. What I love about these French doors, uh, French sliders, is the two active center panels. So th these panels slide out and then you have the whole space open, this whole center space open. The thing I like better about these type of doors then your like accordion doors, which are very popular, but you don't have any screen doors with the accordion style doors, unless you do a bunch of stuff on the outside of the house, adding things so that you can add in a screen door. And the screen door is one-sided, meaning that you can't have parts of it open and closed. You have, it has to be either all the way closed or all the way open, right? So this is a lot more versatile. It's a lot more bang for your buck. You can have the whole center open if you have like, 
you're entertaining and you know you want to leave the space open or if you just want the fresh air you can leave this open and you can uh, close the two center screens which come standard with the doors and then you don't have the bugs that come in you know unless you live a half a mile away from the beach you're gonna have bugs that's the bottom line like this is my favorite door for this type of space and you get the four big panels you get that whole view and that whole uh, space you know whether you have just a really beautiful yard or you have a beautiful view like we have here you get that whole space brought inside of your house which is makes the house feel a lot bigger a lot more open and uh, a lot more modern another fun and challenging part of this project was this paneling so this paneling we were like okay let's rip this off and get some drywall on there and the client's like, you know what? We really want to keep it as an homage to, you know, the house when it was originally built. So can we patch it? Okay, let's do it. So we are trying to find this paneling and it's a, such an odd size. It's like a nine inch plank and then a four inch plank and then a three inch plank, but it's all on one sheet. We couldn't find it. No matter how much we looked, all the different places we went to, we couldn't find it. So what we ended up doing is a little compromise solution where we tore off some paneling on one of the walls and drywalled it and then used it to patch in where we had to tear off where because we had this had to be rebuilt to uh to make this door because this door wasn't here before so you know a little bit of patching and a little bit of finagling but we got it all in and uh, then it got painted and it looks beautiful we got uh, a new door right here and now this leads this used to be a wall that that was part of the closet in this bedroom. So now it uh, it is a door. And so we removed half the closet and now have this new entranceway into this guest uh, bedroom, which actually makes it a little more private than it was previously. Because previously there was a hallway off the kitchen that you uh, got to the bathroom. So this was originally the uh, where the refrigerator was. You can see how different the space has changed. So let's go check out the bathroom. In this bathroom, we had some existing cabinetry. This is the raised panel door, as you can see. They were just a, a stained cabinet. And so we decided to stain them to match our accent cabinet for the uh, vanity. So that vanity cabinet is a seagrass stain. That's a stain that uh, Canyon Creek also has. And you can see this is the, like, it's a, it's a gray, you know, it's a gray stain but you can still see the wood undertones. It's a really nice stain. Uh, it gives it a contemporary feel and also has a little bit of warmth to it because like I said, you can see the grain, natural grain of the wood. So tell me what you think, how you think we did. This is the stain we did uh, in the field. And let me show you the vanity cabinets. And this is the vanity cabinet. I think we did a really great job of matching my stain guy, not, not yeah, which is part of wheat. It's the royal wheat. Uh, did a, uh, a great job matching this stain color in this vanity cabinet. The other cabinet we stained is a raised panel door. So door style is a little bit different, but you don't even really notice unless it's pointed out to you. This is a flat uh, panel cabinetry. So again, gets you a little more contemporary feel. Uh, coordinated that with the same countertop. The countertop on this vanity is a remnant from the kitchen. So that's a huge deal. You know, when you are doing your kitchen remodel, a lot of times you will probably have a piece this size or larger. So if you have another vanity, like in this situation, or, um, you know, another countertop linen cabinet or something like that that you want to put a countertop on, that's the time to do it is when you do your kitchen countertops. So yeah, this actually was a totally different design space. Uh, there was a, a doorway right here coming into this, uh, this bathroom and this bathroom had two sinks. The door to the left of you there, or to the left of me, to the right of you, is, uh, was, didn't exist before. And this was a double sink vanity. So we went to a single sink vanity and added the new door. Voila, new bathroom space. The floor in the bathroom is a eight by eight hexagon. It's a black slate, also from the manufacturer of Bedrosians. Um, and uh, so we set it square, uh, which means just, you know, that they, they line up this way. Although a diagonal on a hexagon, uh, you could do a 45. 
Oh, you can't do a diagonal hexagon. This is uh, this is the only way you can set it. So there you go. We accented it actually, right? So there's two ways you can do um, a black tile like this. You can either do a black grout, so the the, the lines in between kind of go away. But you know, what's the point if you're gonna spend extra money to get a hexagon, you want the hexagon to stand out, right? So we did an unmatching grout so that it pops the hexagon. And lastly, the floor, which I cannot take credit for. The homeowners provided the flooring and the installation. So we just um, finagled some of the island pieces, I think, or left off some of the island pieces so the floor could be installed. Uh, but I did want to talk about it because it, really rounds out the aesthetic of the whole kitchen and whole space because it goes throughout this whole upper level here. Uh, it's a, a an oak that is an eight inch wide plank. It has uh, like a light colored stain on it. So you can see some of the natural um, oak color coming through, but it also has uh, like a gray tone to it as well. It has that warmth again, which I like in a space, especially if you're gonna have something crisp and clean on the walls. Like we have white cabinets, we have white counters, we have white tile, but it looks really good too with the island, you know, and the base cabinet. It coordinates really well with the other woods that are in the space. Thanks for coming along with me on this tour of our latest kitchen and bathroom remodel. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time. It is cool. It is already done. Oh my god. All right, I'm gonna shut up. Talk to you later. Spicy. All right, I like it. Look at that. Walk back and forth. No problem. So that's gotta be right there. You have your whoop. You got your dog scratching at the back door. Oh, mine's getting it good. See? Uh, uh, uh huh. How much did you pay for that camera? How much did you pay for that camera? Uh huh. Um, door on, was it a door? Yeah, right. It was a, it was a man door, right? Yeah, oh, it was a window. That's right, holy crap. This whole kitchen went this way, right? Yeah. Um, what was the other reason why I was doing this side again? All right, that was a good rant. I like that. And you can see we have, uh, this is about an eight foot Countertop, I think. Oh, I don't have my, uh, I don't have my six, seven, eight. Yeah, and you can see it fits uh, eight chairs pretty comfortably of uh, the, the wood undertones of the wood. You know, you'd let me buy you a better tripod. Oh, no. I like that one. Mm -hmm. If you'd let me use a You camera. know, struggle is a part of life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, ready? Mm -hmm. um, uh, thanks for coming along with me on this tour of the kitchen and bathroom remodel that we did. And, um, uh, oh, God, I totally lost it. What was that? What was that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. 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 <laughs>